In just a moment, hear My Son Jeep. First, though, this is Bob McKenzie with a note about some of your weekday favorites on this station. For comedy, Monday through Friday, we feature the rapid-fire wit of Bob Hope, while Dave Garraway drops by for an informal 15-minute visit, complete with some of your favorite records. Later in the day, One Man's Family and News of the World are both featured on NBC. And for your future reference, on June 22nd, we'll welcome back Bud Collier and Break the Bank for daytime quiz Monday through Friday on these stations. Right now, it's My Son Jeep. On Good evening. This is Dr. Robert Allison of Grove Falls, Jeep's father, also Peggy's. As fathers go, I've always classed myself as a, a pretty good one. My children seem to think so, but this might be due to their knowledge that they can wind me around their respective little fingers practically at will. Well, not long ago, I decided to take a stand. I said no for a change, and I meant it. I was adamant, but I reckoned as usual without the children, uh, particularly my inventive young male offspring, my son, Jeep. Yes, it's My Son Jeep, the bright and warm-hearted adventures of the Allison family of Grove Falls, transcribed by the National Broadcasting Company and starring Donald Cook as Doc and featuring young Martin Houston as irrepressible, unpredictable, 10-year-old Jeep Allison. Ladies and gentlemen, it's with a great deal of pride that we make the following announcement. The second largest veterans organization in the world, the Veterans of Foreign Wars, has voted My Son Jeep the best American family situation comedy on the air. On behalf of our producers and our cast, may I express our deep appreciation for this honor and our sincerest good wishes to the organization which made it possible. <laughs> now back to Dr. Allison and my son, Jeep. <laughs> Supper time in our house, as in so many homes, is not merely a time for good food and relaxation. It's also a time for getting me in the proper mood to shell out for the latest project, whatever it may be. I can recognize the signs ten miles off. Uh, several broad hints casually dropped like a ton of bricks, followed immediately by the outright demand. When do you want me to go downtown with you, Peggy, and look at that dress you were telling me about? Well, I haven't talked to Father yet. I'll have another piece of chicken, Mrs. Bixby. Uh, but it's such a beautiful dress. I know he'll just love it. A little more potato, too, please. And it's only nine dollars. They're practically giving it away. I'm certainly glad to see food prices coming down, finally. <laughs> After all, now that spring's here, I'm, I'm sure Father would want to see me well-dressed. Pass the gravy, please. <laughs> Seems to me there's two separate conversations going on at this table It's just because Father doesn't want to hear me mm -hmm. Oh, were you talking to me, dear? I thought you were talking to Barbara No, it ain't Barbara who's going to buy that dress for her What dress? Oh, honestly, Father Bob, you ought to be ashamed of yourself Now, stop ganging up on me, all of you uh, What's all this about? Peggy wants a new dress, Pa Oh, well, didn't you just get a new dress, honey? Well, that was a school dress, Father Now I need a party dress What's the difference? All the difference in the world. You don't go out in the school dress. And then where do you go in it? <laughs> Bob, Peggy means that a party dress is something special. Oh. Well, don't you have plenty of party dresses already? Oh, that's not the point. Everyone's been seen at least four or five times. Uh, seen by whom, if I may ask? My friends, of course. And you consider that sufficient reason for buying a new dress? Well, certainly, Father. Well, I don't. Get yourself a new circle of friends instead. That'll be cheaper. <laughs> oh, but the dress is only nine dollars. Hey, young lady, I don't care if it's nine cents. This is one time when the principle of the thing is more important than the cost. You don't really need this dress. You saw it. You liked it. You wanted it. Well, fine and dandy. But no one can have everything he wants every time he wants it. There's got to be a limit, even to party dresses. Does that mean you won't buy me the dress? You've caught my meaning exactly. 
Oh, Mrs. Bixby, don't you think I ought to have the dress? Well, honey, I don't want to take sides, but I have to admit that you've got as good a wardrobe as any girl in town. Barbara, you understand, don't you? Let's pretend I'm not even here. Well, I think Peggy ought to have the dress, Pop. Then you buy it for her. <laughs> now, won't somebody please change the subject? It must be possible to carry on a conversation without talking about buying something. By the way, Bob, the salesman from your medical supply house came by while you were out today. He'll come back tomorrow in case you were thinking of buying... Well, say, Pop, we had a special meeting of the Hinkard Inkers this afternoon. Oh, did you, son? What was the occasion? We're thinking of making a bigger clubhouse. That, that means buying... Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, by the way, Doctor, I ran into Miss Beater downtown. She says her daughter's expecting again, and Mr. Beater's so pleased about it, he's thinking of buying her... <clears throat> <laughs> Your turn, Peggy. It's such a beautiful dress. Oh, for heaven's sake. Well, if you're all incapable of thinking of anything but buying, I'll pick a topic. Now, for instance, our picket fence. I was noticing the other day how weather-beaten it looks. Uh, I decided to have it painted. Well, good idea. It'll spruce up the whole place. What color, Pop? Well, I don't know. That's what I wanted to ask you all before I got around to buying the... Uh, 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 honestly... How can you possibly talk about painting a picket fence when I need a new dress? Now, honey, if we don't get our fence painted soon, it's going to fall to pieces. But even without the new dress, I think you'll manage to hold together for a few more years. Dear Diary, tonight at supper, my father at last showed himself in his true colors. He knew that I needed a new dress desperately, and yet he hardened his heart against me. I ask myself, wasn't he ever young? I feel that he doesn't... What are you doing, Peggy? Well, oh, writing in your diary. Please, Chief, I'm busy. Well, I'm not bothering you. Go ahead and write. Well, I can't, as long as you're here. These are my most innermost thoughts. It's like writing a letter to yourself. It just so happens that there are times in a young woman's life when she feels the need to unburden herself. And in this house, where I haven't a friend in the world and, and where absolutely nobody's in sympathy with my ideas. Ah, oh, you still want that dress. Please, we will not discuss the subject. No one understands me. Well, gee, Peggy, I do. And I think you ought to have the dress. Well, that's very sweet of you, Gee, but sympathy won't solve my problem. No, but sympathy and money will. What do you mean? I got 87 cents saved up. Here. Oh, gee. Have you got any money? Dollar and 65 cents. Well, how much does that add up to? Uh, Two dollars and 52 cents. Well, how much more do you need? Well, 252 from nine leaves six dollars and 48 cents. Gosh, that'd take me years to save up. Me too. By the time I have that much money, I'd be too old to wear the dress. What do we do? Well, I suppose I'll just have to suffer. You really need that dress, Peggy. Any woman needs any dress she can get. <laughs> and don't worry, you'll get it. I don't know how yet, but I'll think of something. <laughs> How much is it going to cost to have our picket fence painted? Oh, I wasn't thinking of charging you anything. It's going to cost me $21. That doesn't include the paint. Well, how would you like to have the job done cheaper? I'd love it. You know a painter who'll do it cheaper? Sure. Who? Me. No. Oh, but golly, Pa. No. But gee whiz, don't you want me to do it? No. <laughs> you sure say you know an awful lot tonight. Well, that's to make up for the other 364 nights of the year when I've said nothing but yes. But you said you'd like to get the fence painted cheaper, and I'll do the whole job for you for $6.48. How much? $6.48. Uh, what's the 48 cents? Old age security tax? <laughs> huh? Why that particular figure? Why not uh, six fifty or six seventy five? Okay. Okay, what? I'll do it for six seventy five. No. <laughs> All right, six forty-eight. No. Oh, come on, Pop. I just got to have this job. Why? What have you got your heart set on that costs six forty-eight? Oh, I don't want to buy anything. It's Peggy. She needs it to buy a dress. What? Another one? 
No, it's the same one. But she said that one cost nine dollars. Has it been reduced to six forty-eight since supper? <laughs> uh uh You see, I gave Peggy eighty-seven cents, and she already had a dollar sixty-five. So that made two dollars and fifty-two cents. So it leaves six dollars and forty-eight cents to go. Well, what do you say, Pop? You want to paint the fence so that Peggy can buy the dress. That's right. Was this uh, your idea, Jeep? Uh huh. Okay, it's a deal. Come here a second. Why? Mind giving your old man a little hug? Of course not. What was that for? Because I'm proud of you. Tell you what, I'll get the paint and we'll mix it tomorrow night, and then bright and early Saturday you can start to work. And then I'll get six seventy-five. Six forty-eight. <laughs> However, there might be a bonus of one dollar for the painter. Gosh, thanks, Pop. I'm going to go tell Peggy. All right, but as soon as you do, I want you to get to bed. Come in. What do you want, Jeep? It's all set, Peggy. You get the dress. Oh, Jeep, you darling. Hey, cut it out. Let me woo. Oh, you're the sweetest, dearest little brother that ever lived. Oh, mush. <laughs> How did you do it? How did you get the money? Well, I haven't got it yet, but I made a deal with Pop to paint the fence. And as soon as it's done, we'll have the money. Well, how did you ever get the wonderful idea of you painting the fence? Oh, it just sort of came to me. Isn't it funny, Peggy? I start out to do you a favor, and I wind up doing one for Pop, too. I'm going to save him a lot of money. <laughs> It's pretty hard, isn't it, Pop? Yeah, well, it's a little rough for a ten-year-old, anyway. Ah, yeah, my arm's about ready to drop off. Want me to stir for a while? No, no, thanks, son. It's all done now. I'll put the lid back on. Uh, don't put it on tight. You'll be using it first thing in the morning. Okay. Now, uh, put the can out of the way somewhere. Oh, yeah, I'll put it down the cellar stairs. Oh, <laughs> right where somebody can fall over it? Well, find another spot. Okay, I'll put it on the back porch. I'm on my way home, Bob. Just came out to say goodnight. Well, wait a couple of minutes. I'll drive you. Oh, thank you. Such a beautiful evening. I'd rather walk. Hi, Barbara. Hi. All set for the big job tomorrow? I sure am. Peggy just told me why you're painting the fence. I think it's wonderful of you, honey. As a matter of fact, I'm going to give you a big hug. Mm. Gosh, everybody's so mushy the last couple of days. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, they've got reason to be. You're being very sweet. <clears throat> I mixed the paint. That's right, Barbara. Your old Papa hug, too. You keep out of this. I'm going home. I'll see you tomorrow morning. Good night. Good night. Well, come on, son. Help me pick up these newspapers. I just remembered I got some clothes hanging out on the line. I swear I'd forget in my head if it wasn't fast anymore. Uh, Jeep, did you put the paint... Miss in... Bixby, watch out! Sounds like Miss Bixby tripped over something. <laughs> it couldn't possibly be a very expensive gallon of white paint, could it? I would like to have a few words with whoever put that can of paint out there. Oh, hey, look at your shoes, Miss Bixby. I'm looking at them, thank you. White, aren't they? I like the original color better. Well, who's to blame? Me. I'm sorry. So am I. All that paint wasted. Is there any left in the can? What ain't spilled on the back porch is on my shoes. Oh, great. Four dollars and twenty-nine cents down the drain. Never mind that. What about my shoes? They're ruined. All right, all right. I'll buy you a new pair. How much did they cost? Ten dollars and ninety-eight cents. Well, now, wait a minute. Those are old shoes, aren't they? <laughs> How long have you had them? Nine years this summer. <laughs> Ten ninety-eight, please. No, no, they're certainly not worth that much after nine years. <laughs> Sentimental value, Doctor. <laughs> Very funny. Now, uh, let's prorate this whole thing. Call it uh, eleven dollars. Eleven divided by nine years, uh, well, I'd say I owed you about a uh, dollar twenty-five at the most. You know where they're selling shoes for a dollar and a quarter these days? Gee, promise Bixby's right. Can't even get a pair of sneakers for that. Uh, maybe. Maybe not, but do you honestly think I ought to pay you the full price? Uh, no, I suppose not. Then how much? Dollar twenty-five. I 
thought you just thought of something. How can I paint the fence tomorrow? I'll get you another gallon of paint in the morning. Gosh, haven't even started the job, and already I'm out of paint. Man, say... Now what? Oh, what am I thinking of? Here I am, standing in a puddle of paint on my nice, clean linoleum. <laughs> This paint sure goes slow. Hi, Jeep. Isn't it a wonderful morning? You just coming to work, Barbara? What do you mean, just? It's 9.30. Gosh, is that all? I've only been painting half an hour. Seems like I've been out here three hours. How's it going? Slow. Hmm, the two pickets you finished look fine. Yeah, only 311 more to go. <laughs> I counted them before I started. How long will it take to finish the whole fence it takes half an hour to do two pickets. Oh, my goodness, I don't know. See, four pickets an hour, about 75 hours. How much is that in days? Well, if you figure six hours a day, it would make about 12 and a half days. Golly! Well, of course, you'll only be working weekends. Not weekends, just Saturdays. Oh. Well, in that case, you ought to finish the fence sometime late in September. I've got to get to work. See you later. Late in September? Gosh! By the time I finish the last picket, the first one will need painting again. Gee, Wes, getting more paint on me than I am on this old fence. Hi, Jean. How's it coming? Slow. My, what you've done looks wonderful. Yeah, nine pickets. Only 304 to go. What time is it, Peggy? About 11.30. Is that all? Feels like it's tomorrow already. I've been thinking, Peggy, do you really need that dress? Well, of course I do. Oh. I just thought I'd ask. Well, why? Is this job too hard for you? No, it isn't that, but the more I paint, the longer the fence seems to get. Well, you've only been at it for a couple of hours. Only? That's a long time. Especially if you've got a big blister on your hand. Well, how about calling up some of your friends? Maybe they'll come over and help you. Huh? You don't know my friends. They want money. Gave you my last 87 cents. Wait a minute, I got an idea. Hey, Peggy, you remember Tom Sawyer? Remember how he had to whitewash the fence and he didn't want to do it? Yes, I remember. He got all his friends to watch him, and then he pretended it was such fun that they ended up by paying him to let them help. Then why don't I do the same thing? Well, that's an absolutely wonderful idea, Chief. Except for one thing. What? How do I pretend this painting is fun? <laughs> well, that's simple. When one of your friends comes around, just act like you're having a good time. It's going to be hard work all by itself. What else do I do? Well, smile a lot. Like you're enjoying yourself. And if they want you to quit to do something else, you tell them you can't. Because painting is more fun than anything. Okay, you go back in the house and call up Tommy Barton and ask him to come over after lunch. Will you do that, Peggy? All right. And remember, Jeep, whatever you do, don't forget to smile. Golly, only 12 pickets painted. Boy, will I like to have a house of my own. There won't be any fence around it, that's one thing I know. Hi, Jeep, what are you doing? Oh, hi, Tommy. Painting. What for? Huh? Oh, because it's fun! <laughs> it is? Sure, boy. I wouldn't miss this for anything. You're crazy. I am not. This is fun! I'm meeting the gang over by the clubhouse later. We're going to choose up sides and play some baseball. Boy, this is sure fun! You ought to see the catching mitt book Scott with his father's cigarette coupon. Boy, this is fun! There's a new kid moved in over on Elm Street. Supposed to be a terrific shortstop. Boy, Tommy, painting is more fun than anything. What's the matter with you, Jeep? You sound like a broken record. You haven't stopped grinning since I came by. That's because I'm real happy. And if you ask me real nice, I'll let you help me. You'll let me help you? Oh, well, sure. I won't charge you anything either. Gee, thanks. Well, that's okay. Grab the other paintbrush. What for? You're my best friend, aren't you? I want you to have a good time, too. And painting this fence is going to be the best one you've ever had. I wouldn't let just anybody help me either. Oh, now I get it. You think you're pretty smart, don't you, Jeep Allison? Well, I've read Tom Sawyer, too. <laughs> you have? 
You want to know something else? Tom Sawyer's friends were dopes. <laughs> how, how long you been working in this fence, anyway? Since nine o'clock this morning. And this is all you got done? I had to take out time for lunch, didn't I? Mm. Hey, what's the matter with your hand? Got a blistering and busted. You call that fun. Well, I'm going to go round up the fellows. Whenever you get sick of having a good time, come on over to the baseball field and be miserable with us. <laughs> Want me to pick some more lemonade for you? No, thanks, Miss Bixby. Let me finish this. Something wrong, honey? You don't sound too perky. I'm tired. My arm's about to drop off. Well, no wonder. Why don't you quit a while and rest? Can't do that. I'm not getting enough done as it is. What time is it anyway? Just about three o'clock. Why? Gee whiz. Been on here six hours already, and we got 17 pickets painted. Well, I think that's wonderful, Jeep. Well, it looks so pretty. Yeah, and I only got 296 more to do. Yeah, that's quite a few, ain't it? Barbara figured out I won't have a Saturday off until the end of September. Hi, Jeep. Hi, Miss Bigsby. Uh, hi there, Tommy. Hey, what's the matter, Tom Sawyer? Not smiling anymore. Ha, ha, big joke. Well, I got to get back in the house. When you feel like quitting, I got some nice cookies that's come out of the oven. Hey, I could go for some cookies. Okay, I'll go in and get them. You start painting the fence. Oh, no. If I got to work for them, keep your old cookies. <laughs> anyway, I just stopped by to see if you change your mind about playing baseball. How can I? Well, easy. Just drop the paintbrush and come on. Well, if I quit this early, the job will probably run over into October. You mean you're not, you're not going to be playing baseball at all this summer? Well, not as long as I got this old fence. Hey, I got an idea. Get the whole team over here, and if they all pitch in and help me, I'll be able to play. We don't need you that bad. <laughs> Hello, boys. Uh, I just came out to see how the Allison Handyman is doing. Oh, hi, Dr. Allison. Well, I'll be going along, Jeep. If you ever get tired of that paintbrush, well, there's a couple extra gloves over the field. So long, Tommy. Well, old boy, how's it going? Like molasses. Hmm. Would you, uh... Would you rather be going with Tommy to play some baseball? There's more to life than just having a good time, Pop. That's a sound philosophy, but when you're ten years old, you shouldn't take it too seriously. Huh? I mean, it's very natural that you should want to have a good time. Hey, let me see your hand. Yeah, you've rubbed this blister raw, old boy. Doesn't it hurt? Yeah, sort of. My back hurts, too. My arm's about ready to drop off. Want to quit? Yeah, you want me to, Pop? I didn't say that. This is strictly up to you. That's the trouble. A guy's not supposed to quit in the middle of a job. Not even when a guy has a bad blister on his hand and a sore back and his arm's ready to drop off? Not unless... Not unless what? Something have to happen to make him quit. Oh, like his father ordering him to stop? Gosh, they do it! <laughs> I mean, you sure you want me to quit, Pop? After due consideration of all the factors involved and making full allowances for the physical well-being of the laborer in question and the number of pickets painted in ratio to the number remaining to be painted, I would reply in the affirmative. What's all that mean? <laughs> it means that I hereby order you to quit. Gosh, thanks, Pop. Will you take the paint stuff and go into the house? Why? Where are you going? Over to play baseball. See you later. Baseball? Two seconds ago, rigor mortis was setting in, and now he takes off like a jet plane. I, I wish all my patients were that easy to cure. Well, how was the ball game today, Jeep? Swell. Outside one, 27 to 26. Pitchers duo, eh? Yeah, and I hit five home runs. That good? Good. It's perfect. Jeep's not going to paint any more of the fence and that you got Mr. Hanson to come over Monday? That's right, dear. It was Pop's idea, Peggy, not mine. But what about my dress? Well, I guess you can't get it. But I've already got it. What? I took my dollar sixty-five and the eighty-seven cents Jeep gave me and I put it down as a deposit. And they let me take the dress home. Yeah. Weren't you a uh, mite previous, Peggy? Well, Father was going to pay Jeep the six forty-eight, and I didn't know he wasn't going to finish the job. Neither did I. <laughs> you, uh, you find something amusing in this situation, Mrs. Bixby? <laughs> yep, the expression on your face. <laughs> Fine thing. For once in my life, I put my foot down, and what happens? It goes right through the floor. <laughs> she got a dress anyway. 
can keep it, Father? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, you darling. See, Peggy, I still got you the dress. Uh, uh, hold everything. I want it understood that I bought the dress. Okay, Pop, you owe me 87 cents. What for? Well, that's what I gave Peggy. And if you're paying for the dress, why should I pay for it, too? Well, he's got you there, Doctor. All right, you'll get your 87 cents. In that case, you owe me a dollar sixty-five. I do not. Well, you do so, Father. It came out of my pocket. But it's your dress. But you said you were buying it. And she's got a good point, Doctor. Uh, what are you, the referee? <laughs> all right, you'll get your dollar sixty-five. Is that all? No. You still owe me a dollar and a quarter for my shoes. You'll get it. Although, come to think of it, I ain't sure that's really enough. Sue me. Now, how I got maneuvered into all this, I'll never know. Pop, I know you can't pay the whole dollar bonus, but don't you think you ought to pay me part of it for the pickets I did paint? I do not. I still have to pay Mr. Hanson $21 to paint the fence. This whole project has cost much too much as it is. $21 to Mr. Hanson, $9 to Peggy, a dollar and a quarter to Ms. Bixby, $4.29 for that can of paint that spilled, 89 cents for a paintbrush, that's about $35, $36 for a $21 job. But you're including my new dress. That's got nothing to do with the painting. It certainly has. If it weren't for the painting, you wouldn't have got your dress, which I never intended to buy for you in the first place. But think how proud you'll be when you see me in it. Sure, I'll be proud. I'll be penniless, too. <laughs> Allison again. We have another Boy Scout message for all you fellows who are wondering where to go this summer for a real vacation. I'd like you all to meet a representative of the local Boy Scout Council. Hi, G. I'm Scott Bonus of Troop 579 in New York. I want to remind everybody about the big jamboree out in California this July. It's going to be the biggest one yet. I'll bet. Imagine 50,000 scouts together all at one time. Who's going to do the cooking for you? We'll do our own cooking right out in the open. Boy, it'll sure take a lot of food, won't it? That's right, Jeep. We expect to use over 100 tons of meat, 175,000 loaves of bread, 624,000 quarts of milk, 624,000 eggs, 58,000 heads of lettuce, 53,000 quarts of orange juice, over a million donuts, and 35 miles of frankfurters. Gosh, I'm getting hungry just hearing about it. Don't forget, everybody, July 17th to July 23rd, Santa Ana, California, the Third National Jamboree. My Son Jeep was created and written by Walter Black and William Mendrick and directed by Dan Sutter. Martin Houston is featured as 10-year-old Jeep with Joan Laser as Peggy, Leona Powers as Mrs. Bixby, and Lynn Allen as Barbara Miller. Starring in the role of Doc is one of America's finest actors and most versatile comedians, Donald Cook. Now this is Fred Collins inviting you to be back with us again next Sunday, same time, same station, for the next transcribed visit with America's favorite family, the Allisons of Grove Falls and radio's number one situation comedy, My Son Jeep. Tonight, it's the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show on NBC.